We now welcome the number four ranked UFC flyweight contender in the world, Alex Perez. Alex, thank you for the time today, sir. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Hello, Alex. Can you take us into the moment? Just they call you, Cody's out, you're fighting for the UFC title. Where were you at? Just break it down, all of it. Uh, so I get a call from my manager. Like uh, They were at Fought Island, so I was at home sleeping already by the time they called me. And uh, I get a call by like 12.30 at night, you know, and everybody knows like, I'm in bed by 10. Well, you know, 11, the latest, and uh, my phone, I don't disturb, he calls me, and he's like, I'm like, man, it's got to be important, he never calls me this late, you know, and I obviously couldn't wait, so I, like, answered the phone, I'm like, what's up, man, he's like, hey, man, Cody's out, I'm like, what, he's like, yeah, Cody's out, I was like, okay, he's like, I was like, okay, and he's like, you're fine for the title, I'm like, okay, he's like, yeah, you're fine for a title, I'm like, wait, what, like, it kind of hit me, it took a little, you know, to hit me, but, and once it got it, I was like, oh, man. And then my training partner, Ricky Simone, was staying with me. And uh, I was like, hey, dude, I'm fine for the title. You know, all excited. I go back into bed, and I'm like, it's like, they said 12, 1230. I'm just laying there in bed, like, trying to go back to sleep. I was like, should I go run right now? Or should I, like, what should I do? I think I got, like, only, like, two, three hours of sleep that night just thinking about it, you know, excited. Uh, all the emotions, you know, like, uh, all the hard work I put in, in the last 10 years, 10 years plus with the wrestling. And when I started MMA, I you know, it's paying off. This is what we all work for. And to get the opportunity like this is amazing. I saw in the countdown and I see a lot of people bringing this up. You would be the first contender series guy to win a UFC title. You'd be the first contender series guy to win a UFC main event for that matter. I mean, does that give you more motivation? Are you a guy who doesn't really put a lot of weight into those kind of stats? Just can you talk about all of that stuff that people are bringing up? Uh, I mean, I really don't pay attention to a lot of that stats, but I am proud to be one of the first, the first guy to fight for a title off that show because look at the stars that are, that are coming out of there, the talent that's coming out of there. Um, all good guys, obviously, you know, ranked guys, guys that are making noise in the UFC and their weight classes. So I'm proud to be, uh, you know, be a contender series alumni and to be fine for the title. Um, but other than that, I really don't look too much into it. It's just another, like, thing off my checklist, my bucket list, you know, that I'm doing. Can I ask, so the flyweight division not too long ago on life support, will it stay, will it go? Now, this is arguably the biggest night for the flyweights. Obviously, you have Moreno and Roy Val uh, on the undercard. You have the women's flyweights on the card, obviously. Can you talk about what it means to you to be a part of this event and being the, the headliner? Um, It's amazing. Uh, I'm a kid from a small town, and, uh, you know, uh, to be on a UFC poster, I got... You know, some of my family is here in Vegas, send me pictures of the bulletin board and see my face on posters and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you, people from small towns usually don't get that stuff. Um, and just to be that that guy to do it in my town, I'm the first guy in my town to make it to the UFC. I'm the first guy in my town fighting for a UFC title. It, it brings a lot of pride and joy, and especially being a part of a, a main event, uh, fighting for the title, you know, in Vegas, the capital of, of fighting, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a blessing. Finally, I know you fight out of Team Oyama. Can you talk about uh, who you brought with you to be in your corner for this one? Uh, so, obviously, I bring Coach Colin Oyama. I've been with him for about six years. I brought uh, Jivo Santana. I've, I've trained with him about six years as well. And I brought Chido Vera. Uh, he's like my brother, um, training partner, guy. I mean, we push each other on a daily. And I brought my coach from back home. Uh, I started training in, in Limor with Timo Choa, and I, bought, I brought him with me. He's been a couple of my fights. Um, he's the guy that got me started in MMA. His name is Mito Morales. Uh, he's, I mean, I mean, we used to have practice in his garage, and he used to live about 10, 15 minutes away from me. He would come pick me up, take me to his house to train, and drop me back off home. So this is like a payment. Like, the gratitude I'm going to show for him, you know, to bring him along this journey is, you know, amazing. Because without him, I probably wouldn't be here. I, I wouldn't have known what MMA was. Hey, thank you, Alex, and good luck. Thank you. We'll take the next set of questions from Augusto Niaz Gay with Somos MMA. Hey Alex, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Alex, first of all, this will be your, your first title fight in the UFC, so I want to know, how are you feeling right now, this week? Are, are you nervous, anxious, confident? What's going on? 
A little bit of all the above, man. I'm, I mean, I'm confident always because how hard I train and all the work I put in. Um, nervous because, I mean, I'm about to fight someone. You know, someone's going to try to kill me. Uh, anxious because, I'm, I mean, I've been training for eight, nine weeks to, to fight. Um, I, I feel amazing. It, it's probably the best I've ever felt, the best my body has felt. As cliche as that sounds, you know, everybody says that every interview, but this is the best I've ever felt. And about the preparation, how has it been for this fight, this fight week so far also? Was it different for you? Uh, no, for me, I keep everything the same. Why change was not broken, you know? Um, I train with the same team, same people. Um, uh, you know, obviously the weight's good with the same nutritionist. I don't change I don't change much. There's no reason to change something just because it's a, it's a, it's a title fight. It's still a fight. I still do the same training, same everything. Uh, Obviously, I get more time to prepare. It was eight weeks, so that's that's probably the biggest change of all. I understand. Alex, Figueiredo has said a few days ago that, that he sees no danger in you and that you're slow. Do you think that him underestimating you is something that you can capitalize and turn in your favor? Uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter what anybody uh -huh. says. Uh, it doesn't bug me. He's saying that because, I mean, he's hyping himself up. I mean, my fights speak for themselves. Um, you know, if he thinks I'm slow, then I, I guess I'm slow. I mean, there's not really much to say. If he underestimated under me, then cool. Um, I figure that a lot of my opponents do just because I'm not a, like, big known name kind of guy. Like, I didn't get signed for, like, straight to the UFC. They weren't looking like, hey, we need to sign Alex Perez. I worked my way in here. I came I did come off the Contender Series, you know. Uh People don't know that I got a short notice fight on the contender series. It wasn't like they wanted me there. Like, hey, you want to fill in? Oh, cool. Take it, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. So I feel like if he's under underestimating me, then OK, that's that's on him. Uh, we'll see what happens Saturday. OK, and my, my final question, what are going to be the keys for your victory? And what do you have to avoid when you get in there with with Davis and Figueredo? He's a victory. Just be myself and have fun. Um, when I do that, I'm the best in the world. Um, for him, I just got to honestly just just do my thing. Uh, I'm not really worried about what he's doing. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Danny Seguro with MMA Junkie. Hey, Alex. Um, I know you just uh, earlier you explained how, how you got the call and how you found out about the news. Um, but did you expect the call? I mean, did you think that, hey, look, if something happens in – in, in the main event and someone pulls out, I, I you know, I could be next and, and be stepping in there on, on short notice. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was next in line just off based on my performance against Flaminga. Uh, everybody says Brandon Moreno, you know, but we both fought the same guy. He went all three rounds with him, got a decision. Well, I felt like it was a split. I, I mean, I felt like just sir could have won. Um, personally, um, I might be a little biased because just sir is my friend. But we fought the same guy, and I finished him in one round. So I felt like I was next in line. Mm. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, Jusir is your friend. What, what exactly is your relationship? I know he fought at um, uh, at Tachi Palace, right, where you fought as well. I know he has a lot of history there. Um, how do you guys are, are friends? How do you guys uh, know? So, so when he first made his uh, Tachi Palace debut, I actually went to the airport to pick him up. Um, and then when I was getting ready to fight my second amateur fight, I actually trained with him a little bit because he was in Limor for a few weeks. So I tra got to train with him before his fight. I helped him cut weight, like just hung out for a while. And then ever since then, we've always kept in touch. I mean, we're not the best of friends, but I mean, once a month, we're like, hey, how are you doing? How's training? How are you, how are you feeling? How's your son? You know, we spent a lot of time like talking, stuff like that. Um, you know, that's what we know each other. I've not, I've, I mean, I kept in contact with him for the last 10, 10 years. So, um, you know, I do consider him a good friend. He's a very great role model for people in the sport very highly spoken about, uh, you know, just a, a good guy in general. Nice. Yeah. For me, because uh, Atachi Pal is a legend. Um, and uh, I guess you fought him. I mean, was it hard to go, get in there and, and, and fight him knowing that like, you know, you guys have a, you guys are cool? Um, I think it's always hard fighting a friend, but at the end of the day, it's business. Um, you know, coronavirus hit. I need to make money to support myself and my family. He needs to make money. You know, if he had a problem with, with fighting me, he would not sign the contract. Uh, I think it was a mutual, kind of like a mutual thing. Like after the fight, I, I mean, we talked, I called him, checking on him when he was injured. Like, hey, how's, you know, how's your leg or, you know, how's your shoulder? Because I've seen that he got shoulder surgery, asking him how things like that work. It's business when you get in there. Um, you know, I come from a wrestling background. I remember wrestling some of my friends at 
at tournaments and we're trying to suplex each other, you know, through the freaking mat. So I think I got it from there. Like, hey, when you're on the mat, it's business. When you're in the cage, it's business. Outside of it, you guys can be friends. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I don't know if you knew, but recently uh, it was reported that he was actually released from the promotion. And it caught a lot of people by surprise because, you know, he's, um, you know, he's one of the best flyweights out there. Um, kind of what, what are your thoughts on that? And, uh, you know, since he's a friend, are you kind of, uh, I guess, a little sad that, you know, he, he's no longer with the UFC? Uh, yeah, you know, it sucks that he's got cut um, from the UFC. I mean, he, I mean, he's he's one of the best guys in the world. He's been one of the best guys in the world for a long time. I mean, he's been in the conversation, the top, at least top five for sure, in the since the flyweight division has been open in the UFC. But just since the flyweight division was outside when Tachi Pass had all the main yeah. flyweights, uh, you know, he's been up there. It sucks that he's not in the UFC, but I'm, I'm guarantee you, some organization outside, most uh, it's gonna pick him up. They would, you know, pick up a, a talent like that. I mean, that would be a mistake not yeah, to pick sure. him up. And uh, lastly, um, obviously, uh, um, the champion, you know, Davidson Figueroa has proven to have, you know, very good striking, very good jujitsu as well on the ground. You got wrestling, you got striking as well. Um, so I, I guess what's kind of the strategy here, are you kind of uh, open to, to go anywhere in the fight or you want to keep that on the feet? How, how do you see this one going? Honestly, it, you know, it's wherever it, it goes. I feel comfortable everywhere I've been training. It's not like I just trained, you know, one specific thing just for this fight. I, I worked all my stuff from the wrestling to the striking to the grappling. Um, I'm ready for wherever the fight goes. You know, I'm expecting a 25 minute war. I know he, he's no slouch, you know, and if you think, you know, I'm pretty sure he's thinks I'm, you know, he thinks I'm not a slouch, you know, I think he's going to think we're going 25 minutes. If it ends early, it ends early, but I'm there for a war. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. I appreciate the time. Best of luck on Saturday. Well, man, thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Pablo Santa Maria with No T MMA Ecuador. Hi, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. The first thing I want to ask you is about Chit. You said that he's like your brother. Uh, for how long have you trained or been friends with Chit? Um, so I met Chito in Vegas about four years ago, uh, training at Syndicate MMA. He was kind of in town for the UFC fights. I was here helping Carla Esparza for her fight. And then um, maybe like two weeks later, maybe three weeks later, he came to move in with us uh, at in uh, Irvine, California. He came to move there, you know, and uh, we lived together for a long time. I got to kind of hear his story and his background and, you know, um, and then from there, just been going on from there we grinded together when it was just me and him at the gym and then you know Timo Yama all the guys started coming back people were injured and stuff like that and we've just always been super close and uh you know I learned a lot from him and I you know I have a lot of respect for what he did when he first got to got to U.S. you know staying away from his family for eight nine months without seeing his kids and just things like that so it made me respect him that much more and um he's one of the guys that pushed me on a daily uh whether it's running, whether we're striking, we're sparring, we're always competing against each other, but in a good way. We're lifting weights, we're like talking mess to each other, but we're always competing. We're, it's always a good time with him. And, uh, you know, he's always in my corner. I respect him a lot. And he's always just good energy. Okay, I get it. That's awesome. Uh, do you think if you get the title, uh, that will motivate Chito to get the title on his category? Yeah, I mean, th that's where all our goals, uh, mine and Cheetos and everybody at Team Oyama is to get be a champion, you know, wherever organization they're in. Uh, Cheeto, like, Cheeto has all the tools to be to be champion, and uh, pretty sure he'll get there soon. Yeah, I get it. So talking about the fight, hey, where do you think uh, Dave Sung is more dangerous? Um, I mean, I would have to say his, uh, on the stand-up part, because that's the most, that's the part he shows the most. Uh, you know, he really doesn't show his jujitsu, even though he has it, doesn't really show it. So I would say the stand up part, uh, I mean, um, like I said, against Benavides, he showed a great arm bar in that first in that first fight when they were scrambling, he hit the arm bar out of nowhere. Um, you know, in the second fight he choked him out and he's had submissions. He's well rounded everywhere, but I would say his stand up is probably where he's more most confident in. Okay, so uh, you talk about Cody, then Cody respond to you, but if you get the title, uh, would you be interested in fighting Cody at for the title? I'm not worried about that. We'll see what happens. Right now I'm worried about Davison, and then the next thing is worried about having my kid. And other than that, everything else will play out. Okay, my last question is, uh, what's your prediction for the fight? Uh, me winning. Uh, you know, I visualize it every every night before I go to bed, subbing him 
knocking them out, TKO, going to decision. It's in my head that I'm going to win. Okay. Would you like to send a message to your Ecuadorian fans? Hey, thank you guys for the support. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, me and Chiro are coming to do big things. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex, and good luck on your fight. Thank you. We will take the last set of questions from Carlos Contreras with Milenio Diario. Hi, Alex. Um, uh, we, we are obviously hoping not, not to happen this time, but, uh, you know, David uh, had trouble with weight in, in the past. Uh, does it get you uh, worried that at some point, I don't know, maybe that they had to change opponent uh, for Friday? Or uh, does it get something uh, in your mind, I mean, like worrying about his uh, weight? Nah, I can't control what happens with him. I'm focused on myself 100%. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to make weight. I'm here to fight. Whether it's him or somebody else, it doesn't matter. I'm here to be UFC champion. And uh, you were talking about uh, uh, the, the Cody uh, Garbrandt uh, uh, comments. And it, what we talked when, when the, UFC, the UFC offered him or, or announced him as, a, as, a, as the next uh, contender, because we all were all thinking that it was you or either Brandon Moreno. No, no, he was out of the, out of the map for, for uh, experts and fans. Um, I mean... It is what it is. Honestly, like I was upset. I mean, who wouldn't be upset? But just like everything else in life, life isn't fair sometimes. You just gotta, you know, when you get knocked down, you gotta get up and keep going. I, my mind was like, hey, he got the title shot, cool. I gotta go through Brandon Moreno to get the title shot. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. The only thing I can do is win and control what I can control. I can't worry about anybody else besides myself. You studied Brandon uh, and that fight that seemed to be in the future for you both, right? At some point. Yeah, I mean, and we'll see what happens, you know, as long as, as long as, like, when I win this title, as long as he keeps winning, then yeah, you know, I'm not worried about what's going to happen in the future. I'm just worried about Saturday. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. That's all the time we have for you, sir. Cool, man. Thank you, guys.